So the process, just real quickly, um, you know, let's say we start with a five variable uh, model without restrictions. The first step would be uh, to build the strongest four variable model. Uh, so there's you know, five variables to consider to remove. Uh, so we build five four variable models. Um, and in this case, what you can see is by removing age, there's actually uh, an increase in ROC. So we remove age, we proceed to step two. And this process is really uh, continued. I'm sure everyone understands it. This is continued until you've reached a stop condition or uh, you've run out of variables. So are, are there any questions? Okay. Yeah, and the truth is they, and that's really what we'll be concentrating on these upcoming slides. Uh, we're going to be using the 2007 DMA Analytics Challenge data set to do that. Um, of course, it's going to be different for different situations, and the true optimal, situ the true optimal solution is probably a blend between uh, these different methods. Uh, so in this case study, we'll, we'll be going through the uh, you know, DMA Analytics Challenge data set from 2007. Uh, the dependent variable in the contest was actually revenue. Uh, we're going to be just concentrating on one of the major factors of revenue, which is the response. Uh, the independent variables are, uh, you know, there's 228 variables in total. Uh, this spans household demographics, area and household level lifestyles and interest, geo demographics, and also census data. Uh, so it's a really prototypical uh, direct marketing problem. Uh, the domain for this problem is going to be 40,000 random mail pieces, uh, each generating uh, 20,000 responders. Obviously, there's some sampling here. In, in direct mail, uh, the responses are very rare, usually to the tune of, of less than half a percent in many instances. Uh, so we've sampled down the non-responders here which is uh, you know, a common approach, as everyone knows. We're going to be keeping the model parameters static over the course of uh, these algorithms. Uh, again, when I talk about the more advanced uh, algorithms, the more, some of the more advanced algorithms really focus on adjusting or uh, optimizing on both the parameters and the variables at the same time, uh, because they go hand in hand. Uh, you know, as I mentioned earlier, the less variables you have, generally uh, you can fit the data uh, with, you know, more nodes uh, or, you know, less, you know, observations than the minimum child without really overtraining. Uh, so this is going to be the measures of performance on some of the uh, models with a low number of variables is probably conservative here. Uh, in reality, you, you should be able to get better performance simply by uh, refitting the parameters uh, after finding the, the best uh, model. Uh, so just real quick, uh, we're using TrueNet 2.0 logistic binary model with the ROC stopping condition. We're utilizing six nodes, 200 trees, uh, 200 observations, again, out of 40,000 observations in the minimum uh, node, a 0.1 learn rate, a subsample of 0.5, and uh, for validation, we're just doing a 50-50 split, and this is an internal validation. Um, without any variable restrictions, we're left with a model with a learn ROC of 0.764, uh, test of 0.736. Um, for, you that, uh, for some of you that are more used to, I guess, the KS metric, this equates to a 0.392 KS and a 0.351 uh, KS on the test. Uh, so I'm going to start with variable shaving. Uh, first off, uh, we're using TreeNet 2.0, so we're going to be using the importance uh, to make our decisions in a backwise uh, or a backwards, stepwise manner. Uh, we're resampling each um, between each decision point uh, by just changing the seed values that are inputted into TreeNet. This changes which records are. Uh, you know, subsampled in, in the training, and it also changes, uh, it's my understanding that it changes the uh, training and the validation that TreeNet chooses. This is really to mitigate overtraining. I'll get into this a little bit later. Um, 
So peak performance uh, by using variable shaving was actually attained after 72 variables. We were able to trim down the number of variables from 228 to 72 uh, with actually a gain in performance. Uh, so the ROC of this model was 0.763 on the learn, 0.741 on the test. Okay, so what we have here is a graph. Um, you'll, you'll see the green line uh, is the test ROC. Uh, the really light green line that doesn't really come up well here uh, is the actual test ROC. The really bold line uh, is actually an interpolated point. It's, you know, we're, we're taking the centralized moving average of each of those points to, you know, remove a lot of the noise. Um, and we're, we're actually adding... Uh, noise on purpose um, when we're training these models to avoid uh, overtraining by changing the seed factor. Um, and it's really a good method for avoiding overtraining. Um, the uh, learn ROC again is the red line. Um, and across the x axis is the number of variables, y axis is ROC. Now, again, uh, variable shaving, we're moving from the right side. Uh, to the left side, so we're removing variables from the model. Uh, this dotted line right here uh, is the result. Of, that's the final model. That's the model without restrictions. That's really what we're trying to prove. Uh, th that's really what we're trying to beat uh, with a lower number of variables. Um, so, you know, straight out of the gun, you'll, you'll, you'll realize that as the number of variables grows, um, the performance also grows. So TreeNet's making stronger models by incorporating more and more variables uh, on the training set. Um, what you also see, though, uh, on the test ROC is that there's really no uh, true performance gain um, that it, it translates to a higher, uh, higher discrimination on the test data set. And that's really, as data miners, is what we're concerned with. Um, it's really, uh, you know, when we see something like this, uh, we can tell that there, there's something that's adding uh, noise or overtraining uh, to our models uh, when we see this departure um, between the learn uh, and the test ROC. So as you can see, the, the maximum point here, I believe, was at 70, 72 variables, um, so right in here. Um, and you can see that that's you know, 0.74 ROC versus 0.73. Six, which is, you know, in my world, uh, you know, a, a good improvement, especially for, you know, such a, a simple methodology. I mean, something like this may only take 20 minutes. Yep. Yeah, uh, and you can definitely dig into it at, at that level uh, and, and look, look into exactly why that might be. Um, and that's almost even more important when we're dealing with some of the methods that I'll be going into next. Um, because, you know, these models, are, it's in a highly, I guess, interactive environment. Uh, we're dealing with six node trees. Um, so, you know, it might not just be one variable. It may be, you know, two or three variables acting in combination. Um, so, yeah, I mean, there's methods, especially with ICL and everything, to really dig into that deeper. Um, but, yeah, but very good point. I mean, anything else anyone else would want to point out? Or, mm -hmm. um, I mean, I think that just really translates to why this method's needed. I mean, that, that's probably why we're seeing a lot of, you know, the, this reduction, uh, or, sorry, this reduction in, uh, or the improved generalization between the uh, learn and the test. So, yeah, I mean, that's another good point. Uh, so for forward selection, um, our, our decision metric here is going to be ROC on the test data set. So that's really what we want to concentrate on maximizing. 